So many people judge God to be unfaithful because <laughs> the closest Christians to them are not faithful. Are you there? So the picture of God that your generation will have is resting on the picture of the God you are painting through the way you live your life. Are you there? The world will hear you and hail you, but they will not describe your God by what you are saying. That's the truth. They will only describe your God by what you are doing. They will describe your God by the way you are living. So the king did not know the name of Daniel's God, but he knew that Daniel was living a holy life. So he said, ah, this man, this is Daniel, in whom the spirit of the holy gods dwells. Can people describe your God? Now, if the world wants to describe God through the way you are living your life, will they still call God holy? If they want to describe God with the way you are living your life, will they still call God faithful? That's the question you should answer. Are you there? So in that verse 8, there are two things I want us to note there. The king looked at Daniel and he said, He called him, he said, this is Daniel, in whom lies the spirit of the holy gods. The spirit of the holy gods. Now, the king does not know the God of Daniel. But there's something about the lifestyle of Daniel that was holy. So the king now said, well, if I don't know the name of your God, I can describe your God by the way you live your life. So I know that in you, lies the spirit of the holy gods meaning the king knew that there are some gods that are not holy but because this man is living a holy life yes the spirit of the holy gods is living in him so the way you live your life is the way your generation will describe your god are you there the way you live your life is the way your generation will describe your god not just what you're saying but how you are living stop shouting stop crying stop lamenting what can people see in you eh, nobody is trusting me everybody's thinking i'm a suspect nobody likes me in this place uh, oh God. what do people see each time they look at you how they react is a function of what they see what people see in you is what defines how they react to you Please, beloved of God, can we add more people to this group? Can you make it a date to add at least 10 people to this? These things we are learning. I feel there are still many people who need to hear this truth. We, we get them freely, but I tell you the truth in the Holy Ghost. They are expensive truths. So please, let's add more people, and the Lord bless you. We'll continue again next week. It is well with you. You don't have to talk too much. You don't have to beg for trust. You don't have to beg for trust. You don't have to beg for trust. You don't have to talk too much, sir, before people trust you. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are preaching holiness. Hey, flee fornication. Are you? Are you doing it? Are you getting what I'm saying? I've seen parents speaking to me and they say, I don't allow any male to go to my house when I'm not there, you know, I, I, all, all my children are daughters, every, everyone are female. It's only you that can go. A mother was talking to me some years ago, she said, it's, it's only I know that can go, no. Any other person, if I'm not around and my girls are at home, you don't, I will just tell you to wait till I come. He said, but it's only you. If I'm not around and my girls are there, you, only you, I can allow you to go and even stay there till I come because I know that they are safe. And these are beautiful people, not people that, eh? not that the people you see and you say, oh, blood of Jesus. I mean, <laughs> beautiful sisters. Trust, trust, trust. Are you there? You don't, eh, eh, hello? There are things you command. There are things you earn. Are you there? See, trust is hand. The Lord was teaching me some years ago. He said, there's something they call the gift of trust. There are some of you, now certain people trust you with certain things, and you are not boasting. You feel, well, well. No, it's not. It's a gift. Trust is a gift. As you begin to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth, one of the gifts the Lord will give you is trust. 
when God gives you that, that gift, it becomes easy for men to trust you. They can trust you with their finance. Why do you think some of these ministers of God are rich? So a, a wealthy man just came and trusted them with his finance. You can, you can get an employment and the owner of the company will trust you with the entire income of that company. That is because they see something. So the king said, I know you can interpret my dream because in you resides the spirit of the Holy Ghost. So the confidence of this king is coming from what he can see in Daniel. Still in verse 9, the king repeated the same statement. He said, I know that the spirit of the Holy Gods is in thee. Number two, he said, no secret troubleth thee. Do you know what that means? It means that Daniel is such a man that is not confused. No wonder the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Are you there? God is not the author of confusion. What does it mean? It means that there's no secret that troubles Daniel. So some of the words, some of the sentences that this, the king is using to describe Daniel here are such phrases that can be used to also describe God. Because there is no, there is no secret that can trouble the one that is not the author of confusion. No. You see, when you enter into that reality... And that statement becomes real to you. If you are serving a God that is not the author of confusion, you are not expected to be confused. Why? Because no secret will trouble you. That was the reality that Daniel entered into. And the king looked at him and said, this one, no secret troubles him. Meaning that that name, that pronouncement that God made has become real in his life. So if you are still confused, you are not looking like God. Are you there? There are certain words you don't use. I, I, don't, I can't say I'm confused now. No matter what happens, I will, never, I will not open my mouth and say, I'm confused. Never. Why? It's not in my dictionary. Why? The God I'm serving is not the author of confusion. So if I say, if I say I'm confused, where, where did I get it from? That means I stole that word. Are you there? Uh-huh. Are you there? Daniel had every opportunity to be part of the magicians. But he decided to stand out. And because he stood out, his enemies bowed down. Are you there? If he had decided to join the magicians, he would have become chief magician instead of becoming master of the magicians, instead of becoming superior to the magicians. Are you there? For you to become superior you may need to first learn how to stand out. Are you there? If you don't stand out for God, don't expect your enemy to bow down to you. Are you there? If you cannot stand out for God, don't expect your enemies to, to bow down to you. Now, in verse 9, the Bible says, Oh, Bethaza, master of the magicians. So that was the way the king was addressing Daniel. The king saw Daniel and he said, master of the magicians. Now, you see, I told you something some weeks ago. For those of you whose spirit are opened, I know if I mention it now, it will come up again in your spirit. I said when you, I don't know, maybe it's up to a week, but I know I mentioned that during my teachings. I said that um, when you are approaching spiritual things, you need to rely on the Holy Spirit because your dictionary as good as it is, cannot give you accurate meanings. Are you there? Now look at this. The king called Daniel master of the magicians. Are you there? Now, the word master here is not saying uh, Daniel is a senior magician. No. The word, the, that phrase, master of the magicians, means superior to the magicians. It's not saying uh, this one is now, uh, you know, is a special magician. No. The word master there means different. The word master there means superior. So when the king said master of the magician, he was saying superior to my magicians. Are you there? So that means by calling Daniel master of the magicians, the king acknowledged his superiority over the magicians. Still in verse 9, then the king said, Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen. 
and the interpretation thereof. Verse 10. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed. Now, let's look at the content of the king's dream. Number one, the king said, he saw a tree in the midst of the earth. Now, you see, the, the, the dream that the king had was a description of the glory of the king. Are you there? So, that dream that the king had was God trying to describe to the king the glory that he had. So, the first statement was, I saw a tree in the midst of the earth. Now, what does it mean? When you say, I saw a tree in the midst of the earth. The word earth there means people. Are you there? And the, the word tree there also means a person. Earth means people. Tree there means one person. So by saying, I saw a tree in the midst of the earth, the king was saying, I saw one person among many people. Can you see that? All right. Then the next thing he said, his height was great. Meaning this one person, oh my God, this thing, I'm, oh God, I hope you enter into what I'm saying now. Are you there? Now this, this thing I'm saying now is beyond letters. I've, I've, <laughs> I've ascended beyond letters now. So the king is now saying, this one person that is standing among many people has a great height. Now stop looking at three now. Start seeing somebody. Are you getting what I'm saying? So meaning that though this one person is standing among many people, but his height is greater than all of them. So what is the Bible saying? The Bible is trying to refer to the glory of the king, meaning as at that time, he was the greatest king, the greatest king. He was like the world power, like the world president, because that tree has a great height, meaning that person is taller than every other person surrounding him. So once again, if you stand out, they will bow down. Are you there? After the people, I've, I've said this over and over again, you know, in, in the book of Daniel chapter 1, you know, they gathered some people, so they allowed them to pass through some trainings, and after the trainings, they now brought them to the palace, so people were joining groups. Daniel and his three friends, they refused to join the Madictions group. They were not part of the astrologers. They were not part of the Chaldeans. They were not part of the soothsayers. They stood alone. They stood out. And now because they are standing out, their enemies are bowing down. So if you want your enemies to bow down to you forcefully, you must stand out for God deliberately. Don't forget once again, the Bible says, the tree grew and became strong. So when you are not growing and you are calling people's attention, you know, you are trying to harm yourself. You actually want to injure yourself because they cannot climb you. You don't have strength. Are you there? Anytime they try to climb you, they will destroy you. They will destroy you. That's why you see some, some ministers calling for attention. And when people came, the crowd they gather now became the reason they feared God. Why? They had not grown, but they called for attention. Are you there? May that not be your story in the name of Jesus. Somebody's eyes is opening now. Somebody is receiving instruction. Somebody is receiving burdens tonight. May I grow, Lord. I don't want, oh my God. Lord, help me to grow. Help me to grow to become strong. Now, when you see a strong man, a strong man is that man that has grown. Are you there? You are like a mango tree. Don't call for people when you are still one month old. If they, if they step on your branch, you will fi you'll be finished. Don't call for people when you are still, you know, three months old, four months old. The, your, 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 the, the, your strength cannot sustain their weight. Are you there? Your that generation you are calling for, you don't have the strength to sustain their weight. They are coming to rest on your tree. They are going to climb you and find a shelter on you. Oh, my God. This was the king's dream now. But God is choosing the dream to speak to somebody. Are you there? Wait and grow first. As a tree. Are you there? See yourself as that mango tree. Wait and grow. Stay with God for 10 years. Stay with him for 5 years. Grow. So that when people come, they can 
stay on your branches and nothing will happen because you have what? You have grown. Many of you listening to me, you have once climbed a tree before. And when you climb the tree and you step on the tree, the reason the, the tree could hold your weight is because the tree had grown. Are you there? May the Lord give us grace to grow so that we can become strong in the name of Jesus. Beloved people of God, if your spirit is open and your eyes can see, you, you already have a prayer point. Kai! Kai! Lord, as a tree, help me to grow. Kai! Help me to grow. You know, it is easy for you to try to get people's attention. See, when you start getting people's attention when you have not grown, you will die fast. Why? Because those people you are calling, they are coming to climb you. You don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they put your first step on one of your branches, you are finished. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You are like a tree, sir. Are you there? Grow first before you call people's attention. Are you with me? The tree grew and became strong. I find it hard to continue from here. The Lord is not allowing me to move on. If you are connected, can you pray and say, Lord, help me to grow. Yes, help me to grow. When you grow, you see, weakness, you don't pray away weakness. Are you there? You grow out of weakness. You grow out of weakness. You don't pray it away. You grow away from it. Are you there? You grow to break it off. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to grow. Help me to grow so that I can become strength, so that I can become strong in the name of Jesus. Now, the next thing the king saw and he said was, you know, the king said, the tree grew and was strong. Note that word, that sentence. The, the tree grew and was strong. There's a connection between growing and strength. Are you there? Growing and strength. When you grow, weakness will go. Are you there? And when weakness is gold, you build strength. So there's a connection between growth and strength. So the king said, the tree grew. Are you there? And was strong. So that means if the king had not, if the tree had not grown, it would not have become strong. So if you want to be strong, maybe you are weak and you are listening to me now, the key is to grow. If the tree does not grow, it will not become strong. You can't plant a mango tree and after one month you want to climb it. It will break off. But if you allow the tree to grow, suddenly you will see 10 people hanging on the tree and the tree is still standing. What's the secret? That the tree has grown, has grown, has grown. <laughs> the tree has grown. God. Some of you have not even grown. You are calling people to come and climb you. You will just break. <laughs> so please don't forget you are a tree. Your leaves are the people that you have trained. Your leaves are those people that are, you know, that are working with you. So to have fair leaves in this context is to have faithful people, to have committed people. Are you there? If the Lord is giving you a ministry, for that ministry to grow, you need to have fear leaves. You are the tree now, but you need to have fear leaves. Faithful people, committed people, who can, you know, see what you are seeing, who can push what you are pushing, who believes in you. Are you there? If you are working with people who do not believe in your God, <laughs> you are a tree, but I can assure you, <laughs> your leaves are not fair. I know they are not fair. So, as terrible as this king was, God so much blessed him that he had fear leaves. He had people working with him who were committed to him. There was no place in the Bible, you know, in the book of Daniel where the Bible recorded that somebody rebelled against the king. No place. Why? Because the leaves were fair. And then, this, uh, uh, another description of the tree that the Bible gave was that the Bible said the sight was to the end of the earth. The sight was to the end of the earth. What does it mean? That, that is a picture of dominion. Dominion. That means there was no place in the world where the king does not have influence. Everything he wants, he can get it. Anything he wants, he can get it. Anywhere, even outside Babylon, he can get it. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what that means. That, that is talking about 
dominion. The sight was to the end of the earth. That's talking about dominion. Another thing about the tree is the leaves was fair. The leaves. Now, you are the tree. What are your leaves? Your leaves are the people you have trained. Your leaves, your leaves are the, the members of your cabinet. Those people who rules with you. Do you get it? Those people who rules with you. Those are your tree. Uh, those are your leaves. And the Bible said the leaves are fair, meaning that he had now this man that was great, great, have people around him who were brilliant leaders. People around him who were productive leaders. Are you there? He had people around him who were faithful and committed to serving him. No wonder when he went to the wilderness for seven years, nobody thought of raising another king. Why? Because the leaf of the king was fair. Because the leaf of the tree was fair. Are you seeing the connection now? When he went to the wilderness for seven years, staying there, eating like animal, nobody stepped on the throne. Why? Because the tree has fair leaves. So if you are listening to me now as somebody you know, trusting God to be a leader. You need fear leaves. Otherwise, the day you step out, <laughs> by the time you come back, somebody has taken your position. Then the king made another statement. He said, the height reached into the heavens. Don't forget, I told you, that tree is referring to a person. So please stop seeing tree, start seeing somebody. So the king said, the height of the tree reached into the heavens. Meaning that, this person now became so great that he was almost equated to a god. And that was true because the king at some point erected an image of himself. Can you see how, how, how crazy that was? The king is not there though. He called people to make his own image and uh, forcing them to bow to the image. So the height of the tree growing into heavens means that the king became so great that people began to see him as a god. Okay? The Bible also says that the, the, the fowls of heaven dwelleth in the bowls thereof. The fowls of heaven. Meaning the birds of the heavens, they could make their nests on the tree. Can you see that? That's the glory of the king. The Lord showed the king the glory he had given to him. What does it mean when the birds of the, of, of, of the air finds, you know, finds a place to rest there? It's also talking, you know, the, the, it's also similar to the first thing I explained. Are you there? The birds of the air refers to, you know, we can see them, we can, you know, we can refer to them as the nobles. These are people that are not working, they are flying. They, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are good on their own. Are you there? But when, if they come to this man, this great man, they will move from being good to become better. So everything about this king was good. Because if you are poor and you come close, you become rich. If you are rich and you come close, you become richer. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, still, the Bible is still describing the, the, the tree. The Bible says, the beast of the field had shadows under it. Now, the beast of the field here refers to uh, the people of the earth, people with... Uh, people with lower, lower standards. People with, I don't know how to put it now. Uh, when we say the beast of the field coming to find shelter under the tree, it means the, the needy, are you there? The needy could come under that government and make a living. That's what it means. So the beast of the field refers to People who are in need of one thing or the other. Meaning that if you are needy and you come under the umbrella of that government, you will find shelter. Are you there? You find a shadow. You find a place to lay your head. If you are hungry and by grace you find employment under that government, you're already a rich person. That's what they're trying to say here. So meaning that because, you know, on the strength of his leadership, many, many helpless people rose to a point where they became help us themselves such you know example of such people is daniel and his friends they were just ordinary people but the moment they got appointment with the king everything changed they became rulers they became givers they were beggars before but they became givers are you getting what i'm saying that's the beast of the field having shadows on that and the bible made a very powerful statement the bible says all flesh 
feed on it. Meaning, the king was like a general role model. The word feed on it means all men look unto him. He became so great that everyone were looking unto him. He became a general role model. He became a, I don't know the numbers of star general that he became. Kings of other nations were looking unto him. Are you there? Rulers from different territories look unto him. That, was, that is to show how great he was. The Bible says, and all flesh fed of it. It became a source of encouragement to everybody. That's to show you how great it was. Okay? I'm going to take this, this last verse because I have to round off fast. Verse 14. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruits. Let the beast get away from, from under it and the fowls from his branches. Can you see that? So when that only one, which is also the watcher, came down, he said, shake off the tree. Let there be no leaf there. Meaning, those people who are under his government, let them leave. Those people who are loving up on him, let them hate him. Let him become a nobody. Now, look at this. Who made that decree? That watcher. I, and I told you, don't forget, I said, the watcher is also the only one. Are you with me? Now, who is a watcher? Now, one, let me give you four characteristics of a watcher. Number one, a watcher prays. That's the first one. Number two, a watcher observes. Meaning that in heaven, this watcher that came to make this decree, had been what, they, they have been watching the king go. That's why we call them watcher. They are not just there praying. Are you there? <laughs> See, on earth, watchers, they, they pray. They do more of prayers. But you see, the heavenly watchers, they do more of observation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because the realms are not the same. In heaven, watchers, they do more of observation. But on earth, the watchers, they pray. So a watcher prays, number one. Two, a watcher observes. So they have observed this king. They have seen his excesses. Now it is time to place judgment. Number three, a watcher gives account, meaning a watcher gives feedback. Now this is what happened. The watcher in heaven had been looking at this man. After their observation, they went back to God to give an account. This one, this one, this one. Something must be done on this, on the case of this man. Number four, a watcher is a judge. So when, now, the, the first thing started from observation. They began to observe him from heaven. Those were the watchers. Number two, they went to God after the observation to present his case before the Lord. They went to give God feedback. And after the feedback, then God give them permission to what to judge so a, a, a watcher prays observes gives accounts that's feedback and number four a watcher can judge so these realities are not the same in heaven and on earth now for heaven for the watchers of heaven they observe they give accounts and they judge for the watchers on earth they pray they observe they give account and they judge. So the watchers on head seems to have more <laughs> seems to have more responsibility because if you are in heaven, there's no need to pray. I hear we don't. The prayer is a tool for people that are on head so that they will not lose touch. I hear there. There's no need to pray in heaven. I hear there. So the watchers on head, they have four qualities. The watchers in heaven, they have three qualities. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, verse 13. <laughs> Take note now. Watch out. Verse 13, the Bible says, I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and holy one come down from heaven. This is a serious one. The Bible says, a watcher mm -hmm, and an holy one. Now, if you read that now, you would think, okay, ah, two people came down from heaven. One watcher, one holy one. It's not true. The watcher is also the holy one. Are you guys know what I'm saying? So it's one person, one person. But it's, it, it happens to be that this one person that came have two qualities. The, that personality that was sent on the, on the account of this king was one, a watcher, and two, a holy one. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now I'm going to show you something. Huh. All right. So, beloved of God, I'm going to be um, ending tonight's Bible study here. I trust that the Lord will help us to continue from where we stop um, 
next week. This is the book of Daniel, part 19. So I still have some minutes left, about four minutes. So I will so much appreciate you tonight if we can highly need your prayers. So the organizer of the program, maybe you can just spare three or four minutes to pray for me. I need your prayers. Are you there? And also I want you to make a personal prayer for yourself. Don't forget what the Lord taught us tonight. The tree grew and became strong. Ask the Lord to help you to grow. Ask the Lord to bring you to that place of strength so that <laughs> by the time your generation comes to climb on you, it will not lead to a calamity. Thank you very much for tonight. God bless you all. So Lord, we ask tonight that you will teach us again, instruct us, open our eyes to see the truth we need to know. In the name of Jesus, we don't just want to be wowed. We don't just want to shout. We want to be empowered to do all that you'll be saying to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. So last week, we looked at some things. Actually, the Lord taught us a lot of things last week. And then... Um, uh, some of the things the Lord taught us include the, the characteristics of watchers. So last week we were able to see four characteristics of watchers. And then we looked at the differences between the heavenly watchers and you know the ones we have on head. Are you there? And if you were following the teaching last week, you discover that the heavenly watchers, they seem to have lesser characteristics than the ones on head because last week we got four characteristics for the watchers on head and we were able to get three for those in heaven so tonight we trust the lord again to take us beyond the realm of letters and open our eyes to deep truths in the name of jesus <clears throat> um before i go to the teaching i have a little burden but uh, the burden i will ensure that it doesn't take our time again as usual i will just share the burden in this single audio so that the next audios i can continue with my with the teaching you know some christians you know today is valentine now valentine day and uh, some christians are expecting that oh pastor is going to type on his timeline he's going to Talk, talk to people concerning Valentine, keep yourself, blah, blah, blah. Well, when you begin to grow, there are so many things that you will not be told because wisdom will speak to you. Are you there? So I, I, I knew some people will probably be expecting me to talk about Valentine, don't do this, do this. No, you don't need to. Thank God for the ministers of the gospel who have talked about it who have given instructions who have given warnings but i don't feel there's a need to do that are you there personally thank god for those that have done it but i'm not led to do it are you there and the reason the lord is not giving me any utterance in that direction is because to who much is given much is also expected so if you have been learning all these truths all this while then when will you practicalize it when you start growing, there are many things, you know, there are certain things we will not tell you. We should not tell you to keep yourself. It's a normal thing as a child of God. Are you there? We should not tell you that um, sex before marriage is a sin. You should know if you are growing. Are you there? The reason we have to tell people everything is because they are not growing. They are only religious. They are religious people. So religious people, we need to hear again and again. And even when they are here, that does not mean they will even do it. But those who have truly known the Lord, you tell them little things. They, they know how to maximize it, how to expand the little truths they have received. Are you there? So if you are truly a disciple, you should know what to do. The Lord give you wisdom in Jesus' name. Verse 14. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree. Cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruits. Let the beast get away from under it, 
and the fowls from its branches. Now, I don't want to keep going back to the teachings last week. So if you are new and you are just listening to the teaching for the first time, or maybe for one reason or the other, you missed last week's teaching, if you can get it, please do. And if you are new, maybe you cannot access it. I will advise, message any of the admins. I believe, I, I, I trust God in their life. Just tell them what you need. Okay, please, I need last week Bible study teaching audios. I believe they will send it to you. Are you there? So if you listen to last week's teaching, you will understand what I want to say tonight better. Are you with me? So what happened in verse 14 now was God relieving him of all his glory. Those good things the Lord, the Lord has given to him, now God is now taking it back. Are you there? If you are not grateful to God, if you cannot be grateful for what you have received, then get ready to lose it. Are you there? Anything you are not, anything you, 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 you receive that you are not grateful for, you will soon lose. And that's what is happening to this king here. The Lord gave him those, you know, level of glories, but he was not grateful to God. So now, it is time to lose them. So, from verse 13, Daniel chapter 4, from verse 13. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. I told us last week by the Spirit of the Lord that the watcher is also the same as the holy one. Are you there? So when you hear the holy one, the Bible is also referring to the watchers. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that means one of the characteristics of a man that is holy is that he is a watcher. Are you there? That's why not everybody can watch. It takes holiness to watch. Are you there? It takes holiness to watch. The strength you need to watch is beyond the mechanical strength. God must be your backbone. Are you with me? So for those of you finding it difficult to watch, to stand on your, you know, or you know, to stand at your post as a watcher, I pray that tonight the Lord will give you grace to watch in the name of Jesus. So the roots remaining in the soil shows that God was still very much interested in him. Only that God wants him to learn certain lessons. Are you there? You see, there's a way riches can blind the face of a man. Influence is good, but if you don't know God before you know fame, ha, you may be lost. If you have a partner with you, you may advise the person by saying, know God before you know fame. Yes, many people know fame. And because they know fame before God, it becomes impossible for them to submit to God. That's why certain celebrities, there's nothing you want to tell them about God that they will listen to. They'll just be laughing at you. Because while you are talking, they are looking at, you know, they are looking at your net worth. After you are done with your preaching, the next thing they will ask you is, how much is the car you have? And you tell them, oh, five million. They now tell you, do you know how much that car, the one I drove, do you know how much it is? I bought that car for one million. So they are, they are, they are, they are, their orientation is so different that it becomes hard for them to follow God. So know God before you know fame. So that you can secure your future. Verse 15. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the head, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Let the portion be let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Now look at this. Why God was dealing with you know, why God was dealing with this man. Meanwhile, he saw this thing as a dream. Are you there? God showed him what will soon happen to him. Are you there? Okay. Now, from what the king saw, he now discovered that after, you know, the decree has been made that it should be cut down, God in his infinite mercy decided to leave his roots. Why? Because God wants him to grow again. God was not planning to destroy him. There is a lesson that God wants him to learn. Are you there? See, this is how God deals with us. If God wants you to learn something and you are not learning it, that challenge will still be there. It's until God sees that you have gotten that knowledge. That's when you overcome. Some of us now, what we call problem is not actually problem. 
It's just a school of the Spirit. The reason you are still in it is because you have not learned the lessons God wants you to learn. Maybe out of 100%, you are still in 70%. So God will not show up. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So verse 16, the Bible says, Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast heart be given to him, and let seven times pass over him. Now, because God wanted to deal with this man, meanwhile, God was actually trying to teach him a lesson. Are you with me? God was trying to teach him a lesson. Okay, there's something I will tell you now. But you will need the grace to receive them because you may begin to fight with the truth. But before I go to it, now, because, you know, God wanted to deal with him, the first thing, the first agenda that was done, the first action that was carried out on him was that his heart was changed from that of a man to that of an animal. Now, this will now bring us to this question. What exactly makes you a man? That's the thing. Why are you a man? Why are you a human being? So that means that what your man would. <laughs> when I say man would now, you know, a lot of pictures is coming to the minds of people. Your man would is not what is under your pants. It is what is. In your chest. Are you there? Let me come again. Your man wood is not what you have under your pant. Your man wood now is your heart. Because what makes you a human is your heart. So the Lord said, now let us change his heart to that of a beast. And the moment that was done, he became an animal. Can you see that? Whereas he, he still has the normal physique of a human being. The height was there. The, everything was there. But because the heart changed... He changed. You know, uh, um, God, this thing I want to say now may be very strange, but that's the truth. You see, it is not every prayer that God answers. Are you there? But that God does not answer it does not mean you will not have testimony in that direction. So what happens? For instance, if you go to God and you say, Lord, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. And God knows that you don't have capacity to receive. He will not give it to you. But if the devil hears your heart trances while you were making that prayer, he can give you something. And if you are not discerning, you will now think that it is God that is doing it. So you will now go and share the testimony in church, whereas the person who gave it to you was actually the devil. Now, this is what I want you to note. You see, God will not give you anything he has not prepared you to manage. So when you see people who have something they cannot manage, that thing did not come from God. That's what I want you to understand. So if you want to know something that came from God, look at the capacity of the receiver. I have money. Oh, blessed be God. I have a lot of cars. Oh, thank God. Now look at the capacity of that person. If you discover the capacity of the person is low to be compared to what the person has, then you know the devil has given this. That is another litmus test. Are you there? So, God, if it is God, then you can manage it. That's it. But if it is not God, then it will damage you because you will not be able to manage it. See, God will work on the receiver before releasing the gift. But the devil will not work on the receiver. He just releases the gift. At the end of the day, the gift will now become the reason the receiver will be lost. So if the devil wants to change you, what he will change is your heart. Are you there? If you will want to uh, make you bad, what we will actually target is your heart. If your heart is corrupt, you are corrupt. If your heart is not corrupt, you are not corrupt. Who is a holy man? A holy man is that man that has the Holy Spirit in his heart. If the Holy Spirit has influence over your heart, then the Spirit begins to saturate your heart with holiness. So such a man can become holy. So what I'm trying to say is this. What really makes you a man is your heart. 
Are you there? Because if, we, if your art is exchanged for that of a beast now, with your suit, you will be acting like a beast. So the reason you are acting like a human is because you have the heart of a human. So the kind of art you have is the kind of uh, posture you take, is the kind of things that becomes real around you. So a good man has a good heart, and an evil man have an, an evil heart. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, the question is this. You know, this thing that we saw here, are you there? Because most of you, I believe you must have read the, the chapter. You discover that this thing eventually happened to the king. Are you there? Now, the question is this. Who turned the heart of the king to that of a beast? Who sent him to the forest? Was he God? That's the question. Now, one thing I want you to understand is this. You see, God does not do evil. That's the last thing God will do. So, if God does not do evil, then who changed the heart of this man to that of an animal? Are you there? See, when God wants to teach you a lesson, see, the Bible says, in my father, Jesus was speaking, he said, in my father's house there are many mansions, right? Okay? And in the same scripture, the Bible says that there are vessels unto honor and there are vessels unto dishonor. Meaning that God has both vessels at his disposal. So the children of God are God's vessel unto honor. So those who are not of God are God's vessel unto dishonor. The reason both of them are God's, vessel, are God's vessels is because God created them. So every creature of God automatically becomes a vessel to God. So even the devil himself is a vessel to God, but he is a vessel unto the Son. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right. The last part of verse 16, the Bible says, let seven times pass over him. Now, if you continue this story, you discover that these seven times was what became seven years. <laughs> okay. What, what was the Bible actually saying? Now, the first time was, you know, each of these times is when the, the watchers came to check if he has learned the lesson. So, the first time they discovered his heart was still arrogant. They left him. Meanwhile, each time they came to check, that's one year. In the ma in, in human calendar, that is one year. So these seven times now mean seven seven years. Because if you study the story, you discover that the king was in the wilderness eating like animals for seven years. So seven times is equal to seven years. If God comes to you and you say, Okay, I'm going to check you two times, <laughs> that two times does not mean it will come by four o'clock and by six, it will come again. No, that two times can mean two years. That two times can mean six years either it depends on the will of god are you there so for this king now seven times for him was seven years so that means per year the the watchers will come and check him to see if he has learned the lesson so they came seven times are you there it was on the seventh time that they now discover okay he has learned it and the moment they discover he has learned the lesson he was free from that from that experience and then somebody say eh, eh, let me wait wait it's better not to have this experience because you don't know when your own course how long your own course will be your own can even be longer than that of nebuchadnezzar do you know what some of the people are suffering now the reason that thing is happening to them is because they are actually they are currently taking a course and God will ensure that the, the reason for enrolling them to that school of wilderness is accomplished before they graduate. So this king came out of this school with a first class. Don't worry, when we get there, we'll, we'll explain better. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? May God give you grace to learn what you need to learn now before the devil is granted permission to touch you. Now, this is not milk. This is meat. Are you there? You know, meat belongs to those who have really 
matured. But if you have any question, don't worry, just note them so that immediately after this teaching, you can type out your question. Are you getting it? Um, let's continue. Let's go to verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. Don't forget, the holy ones are also the watchers. So that means the matter was by the decree of the watchers and also by the demands of the watchers. Are you there? Let's continue. To the intent that the living may know that the most I rule it in the kingdom of men. Now, the reason the watchers are now making this decree against this man, the reason God is now giving permission to the devil, you know, concerning this man now, is because one. See, this man, what happened to Nebuchadnezzar is just like God sending him to the university. It's a seven years course. And what he wants to go and study is how to honor God. See, if you don't know how to honor God, don't worry. You soon take a course. Are you there? <laughs> soon take a course, just like Nebuchadnezzar. You won't die, but you will just take a course. Your own may not even be up to seven years. It can just be three years. You know, there are some of you now, the Lord is blessing you. The Lord is helping you, but he's doing that through your parents, and you are not grateful. They will pay your school fee. You say, hey, is it not a normal thing? I was speaking to one girl one time. She said, ah, yes, it's it not the one that gave birth to me. Is this not their responsibility to pay my school fees? I just laughed. Some of us are not grateful. Our parents are giving us food, sending money. You think it is just normal. So because of that, you don't even say thank you to Jesus. You don't even say thank you. You don't even appreciate God because you feel it is normal. If you continue in that your evil act of ungratefulness, you will soon take a course. Just like King Nebuchadnezzar here. It was, you know, he took a course, but this course took him seven years. Because anything you don't know, God is willing to teach you. And the way we teach you is through circumstance. So you have money now, you don't you have time to serve God. Okay. You will, you will take a course. You will take. Meanwhile, this course now, they will not ask you if you are willing, because if they have asked this king, if you'll be willing to go and study, to go and study, you know, this particular course in the University of the Wilderness, he would have said no. So this course I'm talking about now, they will not consult you. Either you will just see that your, your acceptance fee has been paid, the school fee has been paid, even your hostel fee. Has been the balloting. You, 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 all you need to do is just to resume. So anything you don't, any any act you don't know now, any kind of thing you see that is deficient in your life, you better trust God to help you. Otherwise, you will take a course. So, verse eighteen now, verse eighteen. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Bethesar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men in my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the Holy Ghost is in thee. Look at that. Daniel has not even interpreted this dream, but the king is saying, you are able, you are able. Now, what do you think is giving the king that confidence in Daniel? He knows that the spirit of the Holy Ghost resides in him. Now look at me. People will not trust you until they can see your God visible in your life. I'm a man of God. It's not enough, sir. The God you claim you are serving, can they see it visibly in your life? I tell the truth in the Holy Ghost. I'm just, the Lord is just helping me, you know. I'm growing. I'm, I'm thank, you know, I thank the Lord for the growth I'm enjoying. And I'm still growing. And I will continue to grow. Are you there? But in my little experience, I have seen trust. I've seen people, I've seen families trust me with their daughters. Even when I'm not married. I, I, I'm telling you the truth. People trusting me with their daughters. Absolutely, you don't understand. Now, the reason they could do that, and this, these are families that they don't joke with their children. These are families that if, when, if, the, if the girl wants to go, if the daughter wants to go and buy something, they can drive the girl there to see the level of security. I've seen such families trusting me with their daughters. Now, the reason they are doing that, that is not because they are careless. They have seen something. So when your generation see the God you preach, 
in your life, they can trust you. I tell you the truth in the Holy Ghost. There are girls now that if they want to come and see me, all they will do is to say, Mommy, I want to go and see Pastor. I want to go and see Pastor. And, and that's what their mother will not ask any other question. If even if the girl comes back late, they will just the only thing they will do is, Are you just coming from Pastor's place? Yes, and that's all. It's not because I'm a good man. No, it's because the God I'm talking about, they can see it. So when don't don't say, Lord, help people to trust me. No, it's not a prayer point. Your prayer should be, Lord, the God that I'm talking about. Lord, make yourself real in my life. When God becomes real and people can see, they will trust you. Nobody will trust you, sir, until they can see God visibly in your life. The Lord is telling me that somebody needs to get that. This I'm going to repeat this three times so that it can enter into you. It can enter into your blood and mix with your body. Nobody will trust you until they can see the God you are talking about visible in your life. Nobody will trust you until they can see the God you talk about visible in your life. Nobody will trust you until they can see the God you are preaching residing in you. I've, I know I'm still going to enjoy, of course, where am I? Of course, I'm just coming up. I'm, I know I'm still going to see greater dimension of trust, but the little that the Lord has shown me, if I think about it, I... I marvel. I've seen husbands. Are you there? Husbands who we, you know, maybe I, I, you know, I'll just come to their place and they'll be with they, the husband. We go for for Bijou, leaving the wife and myself with with few other people. And the, the there's no there's no there's no evil thoughts. The man is so sure that this man is at home. No, my wife can be there. My wife can be there. I can go out. My wife can be there. I've seen people, you can't imagine the level of trust I've seen. I mean, people leaving their wife to somebody and say, take, take this one, take, and they will go with, with all peace, without any itch. Why? They are seen, they, they are seen the, okay, the God that this one is preaching, we can see it. Trust is easy when your God is visible in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? I've seen people, uh, you, you don't understand. I had a case of, you know, this one happened some years ago, about maybe about five or six years ago. I came to, for a party and one of the fathers there, somebody said, ah, I know, how are you? Come. He, the man gave me his bag of money. Bah. Meanwhile, when I came, I did not have any dine on me. He gave me the bag of money. You can see bail of money there. Money there. And, oh, what was I supposed to be doing? So the moment I came around, anytime they want to buy anything now, they say, go and meet him. I'm not a member of their family. I'm not related to them. We are just brethren in Christ. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? That is trust. So when people can see, the, it's not all this thing, it's good to be preaching. But sir, let the God you are talking about be visible in your life. People will trust you easily. So this is what happens. Anytime you see something like, oh, and God killed him. Are you there? And this, are you there? When you see, and God killed him, and when you see cases like this, that of um, uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar, or what happened in the book of Art, Ananias and Sapphira. Now, this is it. When God wants to deal with a person, what it does is to give the devil a permission because the devil is always seeking for permission to afflict people. Are you there? So for the case of this man now, meanwhile, this man was just enjoying as a king on earth. He did not know that he has case in heaven. The devil had a lot of evidence, a lot of things against him. But God in his infinite mercy has been saying, devil, no, no, leave him, leave him. But this time, the watchers found him to be guilty. Are you there? So what God did was, okay, uh, I give you permission. Are you there? Permission to afflict him. But make sure that he is not uprooted. That was why in the dream, his root was still in the soil. Are you there? So that thing that happened to the king was 
God granting the devil, the accuser, are you there? A permission to have his way in his life. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that was the same thing that happened to Job. Are you there? That was, so anytime you see terrible things happening, just know that the devil has just been given permission because he is also a vessel. Are you there? Take for instance, God wanted to discipline the Israelites. So he gave Pharaoh the permission. He gave the devil a permission to deal with them. But the devil now used Pharaoh as a vessel to work on that permission. Are you catching this? 